Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to my stream. So my name is Nacho Riesco. It's been a while since my latest stream. So here I am again now. So for those who don't know me, I'm a digital sculptor, mainly focused on jewelry, organic design. So during my streamings, I used to talk about uh, jewelry designs so on 3D printing. So today, I'm going to follow with more streamings about zebras and, and jewelry. So let me know if my voice sounds good. The music is not too loud. Everything is working fine on your side. And uh, let's go. Just uh, as a reminder, for all of you that wants to know more about me, you can see here my link tree link. See, it's a link tree slash natural risk where you can find all my links to my social media, mainly to my website, as I said before. This is my personal website that you can visit and you can see all of my works related to jewelry designs, as I said before. But if you go to my art station, then you can see there are more examples of my work. Also, if you can visit my playlist on at Zebras Live, you will see my previous streamings about uh, Zebras and Julie. I was making many stuff and then rings, many, many kinds of designs. So welcome everybody. I'm really grateful that you are here watching my, my stream. I hope it will be interesting for you. And let's go. I will try to pay as more attention to the chat. So if you have questions, comments, or well, you want to learn something about uh, my job, what I'm doing at the moment, about jewelry designs, about uh, uh, zebras uh, uh, techniques or whatever you can ask. So let's try to make the, the life as more inter inter interactive as possible. And uh, let's see, hi Baxter, how you doing? Welcome. And uh, da -da -da, oh, perfect, oh perfect, oh sounds perfect. I'm worried about if the music is not too loud on my headphones. Sounds good, but maybe but I, I prefer to keep a lower sound under my, my voice. It's fine. Perfect. So today I have something special to do because I, I was thinking about it because I tried to make a different theme on each step or at least start a new theme or a new project. Um, uh, sometimes the project takes more than one stream, so maybe it can take two or three streamings. So today we're going to talk about Baroque pearls. So I'm talking about this beauty kind of things. So Baroque, so Baroque or Baroque, I don't know how to pronounce it in English. Maybe Baroque is, it's okay. Baroque pearls, you can see this kind of non-regular shapes they are very famous and very common in jewelry since ages you can find many kind of design based um of uh, from this kind of uh, kind of pearls like this you can see many many kind of beautiful designs what i like for example like this one is that you can uh, start creating your design from the pearl. So you grab the pearl as and, and you try to fit the pearl into the whole design. So you can see here, this is this kind of a kind of uh, this is very funny and very cool also. This is, you can see this is the pearl itself is the body of the bird. Funny, I like this. So for example, this and this this kind of tree is grabbing the pearl itself. And uh, there are many, many different kind of designs. Is on the creativity during the, the the time. You can see, for example, this is a very unusual uh, kind of design, but this is very cool. You can see also here. You can see here the pearl is the body itself, the chest, the belly. So the the possibilities are endless. And now I have the chance to start making a, a yearly concept with this kind of idea. Because I was talking with a friend of mine who has a yearly workshop, workshop and he has 
a 3D scanner, the, so he is able to uh, scan real by the open pearl. So they have they have to scan a real pearl for me, and I'm gonna try to build a whole design based from the scanned uh, information. So let me see if you have I some question. Pretty low up. Um, okay, it's fine. My voice is saying that my voice is uh, low. Pretty, it's fine. Pretty low, actually. Let me switch. So you're talking about uh, my voice or my or, or or the music? Okay. Put the mic a little bit higher. And this is what I get. The music is loud. So let's see now. Let's see now. Let me know if now it sounds better. Now I'm, I'm maybe go there from here. It's hard to find the perfect uh, settings for the music and for the voice. I think that talk about the music. The voice is okay. Okay, good balance. Okay, perfect. Now we got it. I think so. So I was talking about the baroque pearls. I have a scan it. A real baroque pair. I'm gonna show you some samples. You can see here. Let me grab this. You can see this is the baroque pair. This is the kind. Of, it was a skin. And here I have a, a compilation of uh, different designs that I like. The idea that I have. It's because the reason why is because I love to uh, sculpt octopus. So I think that Octopus has a lot of possibilities when you use it as an inspiration and you can convert the, this animal into a jewelry piece. So I have this one or this one, or maybe I have here more, for example, this one or this one. I like the tentacles can give us uh, a lot of flow, a lot of movement on the design. The idea that I have is to incorporate or to make the pearl as here, part of the head, not the wall, the whole head, but part of the head. I think it is, it is cool that I like this idea. It's an, it is not a very new idea because you can see many artists have, has, have already, has already made it here, the, the head, the head, another head. And also we can put two eyes on the head if necessary. Let's see what we do. Uh, for example, this one is very fun. You can see it's a seal, the body of the seal with this, with stone settings. It's, this is great, this, this design. Also here, the bee, or this is a wasp, not a bee. We can see here this kind of a really strange kind of pearl with these little shapes that it looks like a piece of a kind of flower or a piece of honey and I know and this is very very cool one where the the pearl is is the shell of the snail or here you can see the pearl is the body of the this this ram so here we have another kind of octopus so we are gonna take this way we're gonna I'm gonna start making a or at least because today, today's training is going to be part of the designing process. So without anything in mind, we are going to start developing the idea, trying to make some searching from our own ideas or from our own taste. You can send your comments or your suggestion during the designing process. And let's see what came out. Okay, let's put this here. Huge, no, no, it's not. It's not really huge. It's not very. It's not very big. Look, okay, talking about the pearl, a regular pearl, a rounded pearl. When, of course, they are smaller than this one. The but of pearls, they used to be bigger than the than the rounded pearls. So they are big. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how big it is because I'm gonna show you now the the scan. Uh, file. Let me put this here. Let me check your comments. Okay. Okay, we are a lot of people. Thank you very much for being here. And let's see. I'm gonna 
click on an import because the file comes in STL file. Import, let me find the file first, start here. Yes. Okay, and there it is. You can see I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna put here the file here. Just, just to make a comparison with this. You can see is this shape okay it's not this shape it's from this view okay. it's from this view you can see this view and you can see this get this shape that we have here that's just 100 percent the same object the same it's the same value so all that we do adding on the on top of the peril is going to be uh make uh at real scale with real measurements so we're gonna we're gonna this is going to be our master file to work with so it's going to be the base for the whole thing that we are gonna create so before i start designing i have something different for you because i have made some custom materials i think you already know that today we have different kind of material working with zebra we have the regular matcap materials we have the standard materials and we have a new bunch of material uh, that it, that are the red zip poly paint materials and the red zip preset color materials. We have a completely brand new group of material because those material comes with the new version of Zebras, the 2023 version. So I have made two kind of pearl materials. So I I made one. This one. You can see this is kind of bird. You can see when you are moving the the object, you can see the reflections and the different tones. This kind of iridescent uh, feeling that you have when you are moving uh, a pearl when the when the light is how the light is reacting on the surface. And I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to grab this material. It's a uh, very simple because my knowledge about. Uh, uh, adjustments on settings about material it's very limited so i only try to start touching different buttons and to see what ha what's happening so but the main idea behind this kind of uh, material i have two already have two we have i have this kind of regular pink uh, material and i have also this one that it is a uh, black pearl material okay the colors of pearl are endless a lot of tones, a lot of possibilities, different different variations of the same color, different tones, darker, lighter, um, different color mixings. And it, it's a really, you can be here the whole day tweaking and making uh, uh, colors or materials for pearls. But if we open the modifiers, if we open the modifiers, if we go here, this is what we have. Just clicking here, this is what I have here. I'm going to show you what I have done. This is what we have. I have this file attached here. The only thing that you should do is to, to have this. Go into documents, turn it off this proportional and make a square uh, canvas proportionally. So let's say 500 by 12 then 500 by 12. Now resize. Tibra is going to ask us if we would like to change the document size. Yes, that's what we want. And we should control N to clean the pixels on the canvas. And now we can grab a sphere. Just put the sphere right key to get into edit mode. Let's click on frame. And for example, if you start from this one, for example, the basic material that all of you already have of, on, with Zebras, the only thing that you are going to need to do is go to document and export this. So you're going to export just the document with the ball hit in the middle itself. And the, the only remaining thing to do is to open it in Photoshop and start making your, your, your sphere, your pearl sphere. Just using different colors as I did here. Still grabbing, you can export this file 
in PNG or GPEG or PSD file, doesn't matter. And once you got once you got it, you just import it here and you can see the results on the on the material. As easy as that. So now you're gonna have a very cool kind of things. For example, I have some samples here. So for example, the other I already shown you. You here this one, or also I already have this one. It's kind of a strange uh, material with two different color, clean and blue. And here you can see the sphere that I used to achieve this kind of finishing. So this one, this one, and uh, this one. So it it is important to set up the canvas to a uh, regular square proportion canvas. Then drag. Your, the sphere on the canvas, frame the sphere on the canvas, export it, and then open it in Photoshop, and you, then you can start adding colors and creating your own pearl material. Okay, let's come back to document, and let's uh, resize the document again. So. Okay, I want to change the color of the document, like this. So this is one material that I made. Let's drag this again, color. And this is the color that I'm going, the material that I'm going to use. But I also have another thing to show you. It's it is here on the light box material, and I already made. I think it it comes by default with the default it's installation of CBrush. This kind, this red shift folder under the material folder of the light box and here I have this material I made this I made this material based from one of the existing Rexit materials so this is what I did just uh, tweaking the different parameters uh, uh, changing the reflection changing the coating of the surface and changing the scene I uh, I get this finishing so if we go to let's see if i turn this off to down the smooth the surface if i go to render and uh, using red zip so let's see what what the render looks like set your comments I think, my, in my opinion, I don't know what do you think about this material. It, it is realistic or not. I think my material is good enough for a good realistic render. So just create your own pair of material. I think at the end of the streaming, I'm going to share with you the material just in case you want to use it. Um, so I will share with the, with the community. So let's make the, let's reduce the quality to make it render a little bit faster. If I will render the other the other material, it is uh, this is the apparel. Um, oh, I, I overwrite it, so I need to load it. Let me find it first. It's in my C drive, program files, Maxon Zebras 2023. Folder start up materials and let me work. If we use this render, maybe the, the, the difference is going to be almost the same. I have that kind of issue with my graphic tablet, that's the reason why it was crashes when I tried to use Reset. I have to check it out, but this is the idea. So let me. Grab again the my recover file. This one, let's say, Ctrl N and go and coming back to render. Let's shift and let's see what it looks. Okay, you can see almost we're almost getting the same result 
maybe I prefer a little bit more the red sift material instead of the matte cap material, but let's let's work on the red sift material. We go to material. Let's select the red wax because we don't want to use it anymore. So light box material red sift. Click on red sift. So I'm gonna use this for the pair while we are working. So as I said before, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna share with you the the material file. This one and the other one. That is this. This one. Yo, this one. And uh, this. Maybe this one is a little bit more realistic. Maybe this one. I need to rework this one a little bit because this one looks more artificial. Maybe more like plastic instead of real apparel. Because maybe this is the reason why I prefer this one. But okay, no problem. So if we want to know how big is this because some of you said that it's too very big. It's not very big if we consider that this is a baroque. Baroque. I don't know how to say baroque. Baroque. No, barroca in in Spanish. So let's see how big it is. I already have here my zip logins sections. If we go to the scale master, it is. 19 millimeters by 25 25 and a half millimeter tall I think maybe I guess that we are saying that this is the y axis and this is 25.4 millimeters Here a caliper here my magic caliper when I'm gonna check the size yes it's going to be a big piece so I we should consider this in terms of weight because the idea is to make a brooch not to make a pendant or to make a, um, uh, a ring I prefer to make a brooch because in my opinion uh, you can put more creativity like uh, that you are uh, wearing a, a, um, a pendant or a ring where wearing a pendant or a ring I think is it's more personal that you can put a brooch on, the, on your jacket even you can you can use it, it can be used by a woman or by a man so 25 millimeters yeah a big piece I like it so if we consider that this is 25 millimeters and uh, we are thinking about to make a brooch maybe we we're gonna set the limit of 60 millimeter something like this 60 millimeters so we can say 16 a little bit less than half of the pearl is going to be the head let's see between 60 or 65 tall maybe it's going to be a little bit big maybe let's try to make it below 65 millimeters you can see when you are wearing the brooch so don't try to don't make it bigger than 65 millimeters so the first step that i take when i start creating pendants or or, or brooches is to create a template so I'm gonna pin a cube. I'm gonna use the cube as a template. Cube. And uh, let's just extrude it a little bit. So let's record this material on this tool. Let's go to MRGB. That means that we are gonna record the material and the color information to the mesh. So we loved it. So now I can use this and then I we can change the material without affect the pearl because the mat, the pearl it's keeping the same material because now you can see here this little icon this little brush icon that means that this tool has color or material information so, let's, so and this one let's see i don't want to rotate it like this the cut the cube now has 34 point 
26 millimeter high. So I don't want to change all of this at all. I want to keep the barrel as it is. So I will turn this off and let's say 65 millimeter. So let's make it bigger. And you can see now how is the barrel compare with the with the limits of the design that we want to create. Let's say, as we said before, the peril is going to be the head of the octopus, so it's going to be the the highest point of the, the of the design. Maybe we can put the cube more or less here. Let's see, if, because we are gonna be developing the idea, so I don't have anything clear in mind. So I'm gonna try test. Let's see how it works. So and now. As you can see now, the ferrule has a, a little imperfection here on the back. Uh, yes, uh, we are not going to use this imperfection for nothing. Because it could be an eye. Oh. Maybe we can try to make more than one design with the same ferrule, but let's see. At the beginning, let's stay focused on, on, the, on the octopus. Maybe it could be something like this because this shape could be the mouth maybe or it should be rotated mm -hmm. because we can we can uh, let's try adding here this kind of in here the head starts here and now from here we can start creating the tentacles like this so we're gonna have this part of the of the peril maybe hidden so it's gonna be a good way to attach the the peril to the metal let's see let's see this is a okay it's a very basic idea what we can do is uh, as we are, we want to create a brooch. So consider considering that uh, it's going to be a flat design. That means that, uh, uh, of course, it can have has a volume from the side, but not too much, because if not, see when we are wearing the brooch, so it's gonna gonna stay away too much from the from the chest or from from the jacket so it's not good to for example i was thinking about craig put the head like this but if we put the head like this maybe the design is going to stick out too much from the surface so let's try to keep it as flat and as possible like this because but because the peril is as it is we can't modify the shape of the peril so let's Let's stay like this and let's see how it looks like in this view. This view, I think from this side has not sense because it hasn't the shape of the head. Maybe it's much better. Maybe let's rotate it like this and let's see. Let's see what we can do. Uh, let's pen. I'm gonna pen the uh, sphere. The sphere is going to be okay, but instead of uh, using a sphere, I'm gonna use another method. Let's delete this. It's going to be better to start from the shape of the of the peril. So let's close this. So what I'm gonna do is create a mask like this. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna hide and delete hidden and now close uh, and now close holes now I can inflate it remember that you can use the control key with the central yellow square to make things bigger let's polish this I don't want to use uh, this pair of material with this and uh, of course it's going to be in necessary to make it thicker 
as a reminder as a reminder you want to know now we want to know now if how thick is this let's uh, add this uh, draw uh, of the sun yes i'm working of uh with an, a scan of the rear pelt yes as i said at the beginning of the streaming so, yes this is the pelt i'm using and it was a scan and this is the the scan of the of the pearl you can see how, how the mess looks like it has a very dense a lot of information this is a very cool very good is pre, uh, precise scan so let's see so you want to know how thick is this with what is which is the the amount of metal that we have here using the gizmo the transpose line uh, we use this now we have one millimeter thickness from the surface of the panel till the highest point of the, this piece so it's good me enough metal to work with you can read it here on the top on the top left corner it is hidden by this you can read it here i'm gonna repeat it here Uh, you can read it here but use the transpose line see what the universe is saying i'm sorry i i have to now better you can see zebras is saying that here we have one millimeter a distance of one millimeter there you go one millimeter 1.0.1 1.0111 millimeter so as a starting point to work with it's good enough so i like to check the measurement during the sculpting process just for knowing that i am the thing that i am creating has sense in terms of the stability weights thickness and those kind of parameters so let's see this is going to be the end of the head so let's grab and let's create a mask here we should work on this at all let's um, blur the mask Stop. and then this and we can maybe rotate it this way let's use the polish to start polishing this just to, for having this kind of thing maybe it's going to be a good idea to find some information about uh octopus so i like to go to pinterest to start gathering pictures octopus. Here we have some references about how an, an octopus looks like because it's not a good idea to create things using just the memory it's uh, it's a good idea to start uh, finding references and, and gathering information documentation about what you need to create for example I like this one it's kind of beautiful simple shape that this octopus hat has I think this is going to be a good reference this one is going to be a good reference but instead of let's try to move everything can okay, reduce remove the mask first I already have one mask active here now like this And uh, okay, let's see if we need to have this. Maybe we can say no, we can have one eye, another eye here with 
this kind of shape. Of course, we are sketching, so we don't need to be 100 precise. We don't, we don't want to, so it's, we are just uh, trying to find interesting shapes and interesting forms, so which works good. So it, it, it is interesting that the octopus is facing to the front because it, it, we can add um, it's eyes on the stones. Oh, sorry, I need to check my phone. I'm oh, sorry, guys. Uh, okay. Nothing important. So let's go to the. Maybe we can I have to just make this as more non-regular as possible. Making it's a good way, a good moment to start using Sculptus Pro. I love to use Sculptus Pro for during the sketching uh, part of the process. Because we don't, we are not worried about the topology. We are not worried about the shape of the polygons, the perfection of the polygons. So we are just worried about the forms we are we are creating. So from this point, it's gonna it's going to start tentacles. So maybe it should be thicker. So so during the sketching part of the process, we are. Stretching, we are uh, stretching or we are uh, stretching the mess, uh, you can see here, and that's the reason why it's a very good moment to reveal the mess using the Sculptus Pro for having more regular uh, forms like this. Maybe the shape of the, the eyes is something like this. I like this shape, this shape that the octopus has, this kind of, I like this shape. Let's see how it looks like. Hmm. Okay, maybe it needs a little bit more material here. It's like here, like two kind of googles or glasses maybe I want to move this make it smaller it's smaller like this and of course this should be bigger So we are on the developing part of the process. So of course measurements are important, but in this part of the process, in my opinion, they are not so important. So I think just taking references as we did before. So we are still knowing that we are having here one millimeter thickness. We are still having one millimeter so we can make it thinner if necessary but so but we know that it is not too thick it is not too thin we are almost in the middle so and casey forces asking do you have to be top or no i never do any retopo when you are saying retopology the only way that i use that is using the automatical series measure system when i need to repair the mess or when i'm looking for um, a smooth surface it's a good habit to have the topology as cleaner as possible but just using the series measure i don't make any manual 
with apology. Never. It is not necessary in my opinion. I, for example, if I can say that I use 50% Dynamite and, and Scottish Pro and 50% uh, a poly mess, a regular quad mess using the Siri mess, depending on the kind of work that I need to do. Well, I'm t when we are talking about uh, sculpting, creating forms, the, uh, carving on the surface, always Dynamax and, and Sculptis Pro. And most of most of the time, from the beginning till the end, till the final STL for 3D printing. But if I need to create more hard surface looking uh, finishing and uh, cleaner uh, surfaces, it's much better to use a real quad uh, mess, a, a regular quad mess using Siri Mesh. But I never make a manual topology. Yeah. Okay, let's start working on the. At this moment, it looks a bit strange. I don't know how successful. Today's stream is going to be because, as I said before, we are just exploring ideas, and I I didn't make any sketches before the streaming and any test. I don't like I like to do it. start as, uh, as sketching directly in Zebras instead of grabbing a piece of paper and I start drawing what I have in my mind. I prefer to start uh, discovering the shapes in 3D in in, instead of using a, a drawing method. Let's see, like this. Let's start creating the tentacles. Most of the time, and I can say 90% of the time, when I need to create tentacles or snakes, I always use C-spheres. Let's insert and see a sphere. Let's save this first. It's going to be but oak. Fair design. One. Hola, Jose Manuel. Uh, I'm working in the process of making models, follow using Max Mixer. Yes, I use Max Mixer for Max Model Follow inside. But how should I follow a model with multiple subtools for making pendant? Okay. Of course, for example, you have a, you have been making a, a design of a pendant composed by different subtools. The previous step before send the model to Max Mixer is merging all the necessary subtool, but not only merging the subtool, you need to create a boolean between all of them. So now, so you are sure that you are sending to Max Mixer the main value for being hollow. So just to start making the, the necessary booleans without with the necessary subtool and send it out to Max Mixer, and that's it. So it's it's just a matter of organizing the design in different layers so when and not all of the parts of the design it's going to be necessary to be hollow so then merge and make a boolean with all of the necessary subtool that needs to be hollow and send it out to make mixer for using the hollowing process and that's it that's it no problem as easy as as it sounds so let's go to we want to try to make, make legs, legs, of course. Let me, let me check how many legs. Yeah. Let me check how many legs has, because some of the times, for you, one, two, three, four, five, seven, Six, seven, eight. This one, it is a real octopus, but this one not. For example, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six. That means that when we are designing something, in my opinion, it's better to consider the solution 
in benefit of the design instead of creating 100% realistic things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and here we have another one, a little eight. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I want to try to make the, the eight legs, if possible. Let me check uh, the information. Okay, so it has two on the front. Let's make it this big. You know that you can change between the different modes using the W, E, R. So that means that we can move, scale, rotate, or draw uh, new uh, CSP. So using the Q, W, E, R from the keyboard, so shortcuts. So you need to add an, a new C, uh, sphere, sphere, Q, drag it. Now press the shift key, and now we can match the size of the previous. Uh, that's one, two, three, like this. Now we can go to E for scale. Let's make this from this part smaller, smaller, smaller. And let's go. I recommend that when you are managing, when you are working with C Sphere, set up the brush size to zero, to one, to its minimum value. So it's much easier to control the C the spheres. As I said before, it is not possible to go too far away from from the backside. So let's try to stay here, for example. Mm, let me find some inspiration. Okay. Let's start from the sides. Let's rotate this one. Let's move, move, move. We can't move more than one CS sphere at once we can move it like this because all of the sphere are connected like a chain from the initial point but uh, i can select for example this one this one and this one and move all of three together so i need to go one by one so let's put this here and let's set another one here Let's see how it looks, looks like. Let's make it smaller with this. Let's uh, move it around to try to find a good shape. Or something like this. Okay, it's good enough. Let's put here another tiny one. Comments. Too many windows open here. Okay, uh, and this left is so much in encantant to stream. Stay up the window. Some people are trying to get it to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your support. Muchas gracias a ti por verlos. Pixel. Muchas gracias a ti por verlos y por y porque sean útiles. Sixtuples, <laughs> yeah, a sixtuple. We're gonna invent a new, a new, a new breed of octopus. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Let's uh, duplicate this and let's uh, rotate it this way. Maybe we can rotate it this way. And also, the idea that I have in mind is, let's see if I can do it or not, is to, to make the brooch or the piece more efficient. I'm gonna try to create, put hinges. I never know how to pronounce that, that word. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it well or not, because when I'm saying hinge, or hinges it's like for example we can cut one leg and we can put a hinge here with um with a pin so now the end part of the leg can swivel so that means that when we are wearing the brooch 
the brute can be in, can adapt the shape of the body when we are moving the body. So it is not completely rigid. It's not a straight. So we're going to try to add some hinges to try to create some movable uh, legs at the end. That's the idea that I have in mind. Anima Sculptoris. El último stream que vi tuyo hiciste unas cámaras de serpiente. El último. Eso ya hace tiempo. Ya, sí, sí. Me gusta mucho hacer escamas. Y ahora un pupo. <laughs> yes, I, I, I love to create, to love anim to create animals. So it's a very source of inspiration when you're creating jewelry. So let's follow. Let's follow. Are you gonna use C modeler to make this technical parts like hinges? Yes and no, because I'm not a big okay yeah. Uh, my experience about C modeler is very limited because I come more from the traditional way of sculpting. So I'm not a very technical guy. I prefer to, for example, if I if I need to create a hinge, I prefer to use booleans instead of uh, start building the topology for the hinges with the quads, with the with the bezels and the, in the borders. I prefer to to sculpt them instead of using C modeler, but. Yeah, we can we can use the model, but it's going to be a very simple hinge, I think. It, something like this. It's going to be. Let me think about it. Um, for example, this is going to be the the leg. The leg is going to have this shape. The end of the leg. And here we are going to have the negative part, or the other part, something more or less, something like this and this is going to be so we are going to have one two two and this is going to be the hinge so the pin will go here to here and it's, this part is going to connect this so with this this is going to be possible to to make a movable part at the end mostly at the ends of the of the lower tentacles, not not at all. Only maybe maybe two or maybe one or two, so not too much because when we are putting this kind of uh, elements, we are adding more job to the people who needs to to create uh, the, the thing manually. So we are going to increase the price and, and so on. So try to make the things beautiful but simple. Try to find the balance between both concepts, right? Uh, let's uh, let me turn on this light. Same, like yeah, I prefer. I don't. I don't want to being restricted by technical uh, problems. For example, I prefer to. If I don't know how to make a vessel, I prefer to sculpt the vessel. If I don't know how to create um, a curve, a perfect curve with uh, with the C modeler, I just go ahead and start sanding or removing the uh, necessary material till till having the shape that I want. So this is the idea. Because I come more from traditional way of sculpting than uh, regular three D modeling. So. My way of thinking is do the things by hand instead of try to find the process or the buttons which makes what you want to to achieve. Let's say something like this. Always we are checking the flow, the the, the, the composition from all views, from the front, from the side, from the other side, just to, for checking that we are creating thing. This could be much longer. I love to create to use a C sphere because they are very very flexible, as you can see. So it's just for sketching. It's it's like you can move, you can transform. Now it looks like a kind of alien. Uh, with helmet, with uh, with a space suit or something. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey Leonardo, how you doing? Thank you very much. And uh, always a struggle with elements like this and prepare them in writing. It would be interesting to see it made just with Seabrush methods. I think that, my opinion, right? So the methods, the methods behind Seabrush are directly connected with the traditional methods. So what I want to say is, would you want to create a hint with, uh, with real metal? So you are just cutting the metal you are um, removing the wanted material from the metal with the file. You are polishing the metal and you are using the same method with ZBrush. You grab a piece of material and you start cutting the material, sending the material, removing the wanted material. And you are just focused about on the shape that you are creating. So, of course, during the process, you are taking measurements from point to point to know how big it is or how thick it is and, and so on. But you are not so restricted with 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 a CAD software that you need to create the the armature, the the structure of the curves for have something. So I can start from a cube, removing the material that I don't want with a knife tool, with a Boolean, or even carving on the surface till achieving what I want. So after the 3D printing, if we compare one piece made with Rhino, one piece made with Seabrush with this traditional way of working, at the end, it's going to be as same as uh, same operative. Uh, they are going to have the same. <laughs> let's see how to say it is. Uh, they are going to work the same. So we can't see the differences. So at the end, it doesn't matter the method. So even if you come more from the traditional way of sculpting, I think in my opinion, Rhino and the cut server are too much restrictive for me would you come here uh, let's see so I'm gonna add some material here it just looks like like a duck or like a bird should be here and should be smaller seventeen five change so. I think the, the eyes need to be more on the sides like on the front maybe more so i'm facing to the front as i said before as more as possible because if we can set the stones on the eyes it's going to be better that they are facing to the front instead of the sides and then we can start So we can, for example, let's see how it works. If, if I grab this, and here I have this oval or marquee shape. Let's try this, and we can put the stones on the eyes to see how it looks like. At this moment, I don't care about the, the measurement of the stone. I just focus it about how it works. If it works good, I can take the next step and start considering the measurements for knowing if, if that I am using the right the stone size. But for now, let's keep it there. And let's see. I'm not very happy about the head shape, but. Uh, Let's follow working. Here I have other examples of octopus that have has more prominent uh, eyes. Let's say if I grab a sphere.
more something like this. They have more something like this. Yeah, what do you think now looks better? <laughs> now it has a more crazy face, let's put it, yeah, yeah, more. I don't know, I don't know, I'm still not happy with the, with the shape of the, of the face, but okay, let's keep working. Uh, okay, let's see. I'm always trying. Uh, that's a bodybuilder flexing his muscles. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it could be. This could be the heart, the arm. <laughs> I just, yeah, they're not primitive. This is this is a custom bro that I made with some some stone, some hem cutters. A friend of mine gave me from a cat software, so I made my own. I am Ambrose. Uh, let's uh, rotate this. Maybe we can try to take the decision if we want to create, for example, the tentacles, coil it this way, coil it this way, for example, and uh, coiling this way. We have four. Oh, we need four more. Oh my god, so. No, no, this could be the opposite. Maybe something like this, a little bit longer, a little bit shorter here, and maybe more or less something like this. And this kind of shape. Hmm. Too simple, maybe. I like the idea that uh, they are coiling to the sides, like you said, like a bodybuilder said. <laughs> it looks like a it's going to be the Popeye, Popeye octopus or something. So. Or maybe we can put this this way and maybe this way like this. And we, we can put one coiling in this way, in this. Let's put that. We have one, we have two, we have three. We can put one, two, three, four, five, six. Three, four, five, six. And the other one could be here, and the other one could be go go there. Hmm. No, I'm not having a good balance. I'm not having a good balance of. Maybe we can put all of them. You making the same the same direction no <laughs> let me see because when we are designing a jewelry piece always we need to keep in mind how easy is going to be to print to cast and to finish so if we start coiling the tentacles one on top of the other that goes up and down start making kind of braids or um, coiling uh, curves maybe it's going to be very difficult to finish to have a so try to have a good balance between uh, the, how beautiful it is and uh, how simple in terms of manufacturing trying to make it as flat as possible but not so simple. Is this drawing tool you are using in Zebras? No, no, it is. This is an Epic Pen external. This is an external. This is called Epic Pen. This. You, can, you have a free version of it. Epic Pen, that's it. Can anyone let me know what the screen annotation tool? Yeah, EpiPen. Everybody ask it during the streamings. So, let's see. Hmm. 
and we can try to make something more like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I like this shape. We can put here another one. Here, for example. We can have this. This kind of shape. This kind of shape. I think I, I like it. What do you think? Do you like it or this kind of maybe if I rotate it a little bit to the right, it could work, but it has a good balance, I think. Okay, let's stay with this shape. Let me make uh, something like this. So, so I need to then select this one and rotate it. This way. No, it doesn't look a uh, bodybuilder anymore. <laughs> so now it looks different. Let's uh, rotate and uh, come here. Let's rotate this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. Move, move. Uh, I can't believe that's a. Um, it's a, it is an amazing software. I agree with you, Arctic Mew. Do do I render inside of ZBrush or Keyshot? I, today I'm I'm start rendering with uh, Reset of ZBrush. I like the new way of working with this new rendering system. By my main rendering tool is uh, Keyshot. This is still Keyshot. But the thing that I like about uh, the new rendering system is that uh, you are inside of Cebras and you can use polypane, you can use masking for creating effects with the material. And it's very straightforward. If you are familiar with Cebras, so and this is the reason why I love. I like to use this, but my main rendering tool is uh, a key shot. Let's duplicate this. Let's save this. Uh, and that's also cool to use this as well. So I can have to get into my work. My cat comes to say hello. Uh, so cool. Yeah, to see his beard. I love to use his beard. Today is kind of all this cool <laughs> antique way of working uh, thing. No, not too much people are still using the uh, CS beard, but I, I, I love to, to use them. For example, when I need to create branches, tentacles, um, um, snakes. CSphere, in my, in my opinion, is the best way of working. Even more is that you need to sketch before going to the final decision. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's try to don't jump like this. Like this, and let's go like this. Here. Okay, we have only three. Let's uh, duplicate. You can't be here. So let's see. 
How can I solve this problem? Before I go work on this, maybe if I select this, duplicate, mirror, and now I can, I can have this one. If I use the opposite curve. This. Be careful if this kind of uh, transparent thing happens because that means that the connection between each sphere is not working properly. So be careful that uh, when you are using C spheres, the organization is good enough to avoid problems with the mess with the polygons of the final mesh. I'm going to put this higher. I'm sorry dear, that is now it's going, it's been a bit boring because I'm always doing the same thing during the whole stream. But I think, as I said at the beginning, uh, it's going to be part of the designing and, and the concepting process. So... Yeah, let's see if I put the head here. here. I don't like to see the eyes. Let's work on the head. Let's remove the cavity because now it looks like more like an oscar. And let's go to the Sculptist Pro for removing the whole thing. Uh -huh. That head is too, too rigid to strike because maybe it needs a bit of movement like this, breaking the the vertical line. When we talk about design, one of the things that some people told me is try to avoid uh, the to, of putting too many parallel or vertical lines. They make they make the, the design less interesting. So that's the reason why now I can I have made the same mistake as before. Now you can see it is completely vertical, so it's much better to go at some point to break the composition like this. It is vertical again. I did the same mistake as before. I want to rotate it. make it more exaggerated also what we can do is, is in, we're gonna try we can try to try to make the head a little bit not a little bit uh, pro, a profile view I mean so it's an idea that I have it now maybe we can put here an eye and this the other eye here so now it's not completely facing to the front it's a little bit twisted i think like this it is more interesting than before i don't want to use sculptors pro now i think like this it works better so now the flows, the flow changes. So now I can see that the flow is going more into this direction instead of what we are currently having. But it has now something like uh, this. It's a little bit messy because we have too many curves. So and I want, I'm gonna try to Put the arm the arms a little bit more to the right try to follow this 
this main line. The fears are great, yes, I'm agree with that. Do you know why my chisel scribble brush is only doing a dot instead of dragging a line? Uh, let me shake, let me shake it out. Uh, chisel brush, B, C, where are you? Chisel brush. And you made it by yourself? Or it is uh, the regular chisel brushes, which comes with the uh, C brush. They should do. Oh, I can't use the sculptor's pro with the chisel brushes, so maybe I need to let's say to make an example. Let's grab the sphere, make a polymass, subdivide it. Still having enough polygon so this is how the chisel brush works they should work like this if not check the latest steps that you can see now I have 0 0.0.5 no, 0 0.005 let's say shift and lazy mouse now says 0 0.05 if you have a bigger value, maybe you can have that issue. I think so. Or go into the stroke. Curve. No. Lazy mouse. No. It's. I think it's. The, the issue is related to the lazy mouse settings. If not, you, sh you should have this clean, continuous shape. And sometimes it's just a matter of finding the right number. Instead of zero, try to put 0 0.01, 0 0.02, or 0 0.1 till, till having the right uh, number. Um, do you know why my chisel is 100% looks like they give you a good extractor to start from if you use them properly? Yeah, I'm agree with that. Let's come back to our architects, guys. So, as I said before, let's try. Ro let's start rotating this. Let's start rotating this. And let's start rotating this. And moving this thing here, moving here, moving here. Let's try to create a kind of fake mm, depth filling to the design so because if not it looks like it's um like a compressed uh, octopus animal instead of uh, a real animal okay now we are just exploring the design as I did before in terms of the composition the balance the flowing lines and so on after comes details secondary forms and things like this let's make create an opposite curve here let's uh, rotate 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 yeah this is, i think in my opinion it, it does start looking good i may start having things that i like mm -hmm. but oh, we are still only having four legs okay let's see where do we put more Uh, for example, I can duplicate uh, this point. Duplicate W. And uh, let's say, let's try. As I said before, I'm gonna try to don't make the leg composition too complex. 
for the finishing part. And during the next streaming, the future streamings, maybe we can decide to add the stones on the body. I don't know, or just the sculpting, the skin uh, textures. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Maybe we can add the stones in the suckers. Could be a good idea. Maybe here it's going to be a good place to add the hinge. Here. Well, that maybe I can we can do this tentacle a bit bigger. Oop. I need another extra sphere here, and maybe this one needs to be a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger, and you a little bit smaller. Yeah, and then you needs to. Make it more, I need more space here. Okay, more, more or less, and then like this. I'm gonna use this, duplicate, and mirror it, send it to the other side, and let's. Let's put here. I don't care about the back side because the back side is going to be almost uh, flat. Hmm. We need more specs. <laughs> so too many legs. But then at the end we are gonna create the sixtopus in, instead of the octopus. <laughs> it's going to be a good idea to invent the sixtopus. Maybe we can follow this gap. We can fill this gap with this leg. What we can do is for having a, a um, now we are over the 65 millimeter we decided before, so but maybe we are around. Mm -hmm, let me see, from top to bottom, we are around 72 millimeters. Oh, it's going to be too big, baby. 72 millimeters. 70, 70, 2 millimeters this big, it's going to be a very big piece, so hmm. let's try to make this smaller. Now, once we have real polygons, maybe we can make it smaller at that point, but let's try. And now we Turn this on, and we turn on the boolean, so we we can see all the booleans looks works on the back. Uh, what I did left maybe okay. Change the focal set body. We push to the front. Maybe we can see this is going to be the limit. Like this, a bit pale. This too far on the back. Maybe it's not going to be necessary to to change this. And now, uh, like uh, this. And the, the head. It's going to be necessary the head. You are the head. So to create something like this.
Okay, now it looks like more like an octopus than before, but they was looked like uh, an alien or, or something. That's strange. Okay, I think now it's much better. And a good idea at some point is, for example, if we go, because I, I got it by default enabled, I go to preferences, if I turn on the thumbnail, so now we can see how the silhouette works. So we can see the negative spaces. So that means that I can see the this tentacle is closing uh, negative space here, which I don't like. So this needs to be you needs to be. No, it to be something more like this. And here in the middle, we have a lot of mass, a lot of... I need a bit more of... Push to the front, yes. Extending this leg till here. I think now it works better. I don't care now about how break the legs looks like because once we are start working with the real polygons, it's going to be the time to start smoothing the curves. Try to open this gap better. Like this. Let's see how we fix this problem of Anhami here with this legs. Hmm. Too many legs. Too many legs. Yes. I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six to push yet. Okay, it could be a six to push if necessary. So I think that as the main, the main structure, it's almost this side. To one few. Um, I want to work with this one. I think the main shape is uh, decided because if we need two more legs, what we can do is put in the endings, for example, add, adding an ending here, another ending here, just the tips that we can, we're having the all of the of the legs but for now in terms of design it's going to be good enough it's going to be good enough I think so if I watch now the head now if we are working in perspective in fake perspective what I'm seeing is like uh, this is going to be the limit so it's going to be something like this. You know what I mean? So it is not at the front, it's like it is a little bit rotated with a, a little angle. So this is going to be so that's the reason why I can see here one eye and the other eye is going to be here. Both are not facing to the front, but I like this. So what we need them is I can select this brush for example and I can this is going to be the limit then the vertex now the 
of the vertex. I want to say is the the border, the edge of the cube I was drawing before. And for example, to start creating some detail, maybe it's going to be good if I eyes are going to be more or less something like this. There you go. It starts looking good, I think. What do you think? Do you like it? Maybe I like this kind of sexy eyes shape. Like this. Now I'm just working on the shapes of the head. We're starting from a basic shape, now I'm working with more uh, secondary forms. For example, I can follow this line that I have here to the end, to having more or less something, something like this. Yeah. Okay, what we are creating usually, the, the goal is, my opinion is, not to create 100% uh, realistic uh, anatomical detail uh, designs, so we are looking for more um, basic forms, iconic forms. Maybe it looks like a bit of a bit of evil. Maybe, maybe we can work a little bit more on the eyes because like this looks a bit uh, like a bad guy, like evil octopus. It's starting looking like an alien again. So okay, let's undo this part. But I like how it works. This kind of. Uh, I don't know how to say the word. The word in the Spanish is es corto. When you are not watching these things from the front, so it's facing to the camera, like you know, when you're painting a hand, pointing to the viewer instead of I don't know how to say it. It's, let me let me try to find it in with the Google Translator. Es corto. Shortening, forest shortening, forest shortening. I'm talking about this, or shortening. The first time that I see this word, I know. Thanks, Vector. Glad you like it. Okay, we're almost done. We are still having three and thirty minutes. We keep working. Maybe the head is too much. Maybe we can. We can put this here. Oh, maybe here. Maybe it's going to be time to start.
working with uh, and happy with the face with the head but let me see okay let's uh, okay. Mm -hmm. are you looking for some inspiration on the head if I grab this Okay, let's start when you don't find the the solution it's better to leave it red and uh, start working with a completely different thing so i'm gonna start creating the meshes for the for the cs spheres the first thing that i'm gonna do is create a new folder cs spheres to keep everything organized I'm gonna put all of the zero spheres inside of a folder. I have to create another one. I don't, I don't want to use this one. And now let's just start creating the database scheme. Just uh, one thing to know about the CS spheres is that if you go to a database scheme and you click on preview, you can see by default CBRUS is giving to you a Dynamesh topology. I prefer instead of work, starting working with directly with Dynamis, I prefer to work with uh, regular polygons. Let's create this thing smaller. So how to do that is set up the dynamic resolution instead of 256 to zero. And now we are having poly real regular polygons instead. Let's uh, make it up to the skin. The bad thing about this is you should go one by one repeating the same thing. Dynamic zero, make that to the skin. Next one, zero, make that to the skin. Zero, make that to the skin. Two more, zero, make that to the skin. And uh, maybe there is a macro or something able to do it automatically but i don't know make it up to the skin so let's close the folder so let's insert the skins we made you and you and you 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 uh, you and we have all of them inside of the folder i prefer to keep them outside One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So now we'll, uh, let's hide the folder. I, I missed one. Where are you? you? Maybe I made some twice. No. One, two, three. Uh, this is. No, I have oh the the eye where like this. The icon was on the negative icon. Let's uh, merge them together. Selecting the first one, merge. 
merge down, merge down, merge down, merge down, and merge down. Why I merge it down all together? Because now I can polish all of them together at the same time. So polish, 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 polish. Now we are start getting more relaxed mesh. And now maybe it's going to be a good time to make them smaller. Maybe we can start playing with the with this. Following playing with the composition. I like it like this, for example. He means the concept art of magic. How do you make the material gold fast? Can you show I don't have any design photo. I am creating a concept from my, from my. This is the, the inspiration that I am having. Different pictures from different um, octopus uh, sculptors, and I have this collection of inspiration based from jewels made with the octopus theme. This. I was talking about this at the beginning of the streaming, so but I don't have anything in mind, so I'm just testing and finding what I like without any um, thing to copy or or to base what I'm doing. This is the interesting thing about this process, I think. There is a problem in your mic. Are you sure? I was talking about my mic at the beginning of the of the stream. Everybody is listening to me, right? Let me know, please, because Abdullah is saying that uh, he is not listening to me. So, looks like my microphone is working. Do you listen to me? Are you listening to me? Yeah, now it's good. Okay, perfect. Perfect, so let's follow playing around with the concept like this. Yes, voice is clear, perfect. So now I'm gonna select this, the move infinite brush. Let's make it bigger. Now I'm going to turn this on topological. So with the topological option active, I'm going to be able to move each tentacle individually even if they are in the same subtool so let's uh, try to move them around because now i am having the message composed by multiple subdivision loops yeah i know so let's back face mask to start fixing the thicknesses at some point maybe it's going to be a good idea to auto group to apply a different polygroup for each one so with this i can tap on this one and i can start selecting them individually and i can just start working on this like this and then you should be the effect that comes from behind like this maybe i can try to change the angle like this let's uh, select this one let's push it to the front not that much um, maybe i can rotate it like this i don't like this wavy wavy or i don't know how to say this so wavy waviness here maybe i can make it longer this way 
Yeah, maybe it's way better. Let's hide this one. Let's relax the mess with the polishing. That's it. Yeah, it is really hard to manage all of this concept to get the final shot just in sculpting. Yes. Do you think that this is a good practice? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, okay, it's uh, it's going to be easier if you already have a thing to copy or to follow, or at least if your design is based on different uh, designs and this this time i'm just talking about the designing process so during the process when you are uh, testing things when you create something and you don't like it then you start again just from another point remove it if you like it you follow with uh, with that way so for at least to for today maybe next week i'm gonna have the design more polished and we are gonna start talking about more technical things about how to create the the suckers on the on the arms and how to start working on the backside. if we decide to start adding stones where to place them how to place them but today is just being here talking about uh chilling with uh, the designing process. Hola Alfredo, desde Colombia. Muchas gracias. Lástima que no puedo hacer el curso en Vertex. El... Habrá algunos más, espero, no lo sé. Ok, you can rewatch the stream whenever you want after, after Daniel, so... You don't have to be worried about that. So, and you can write your just in case if you have comments or questions about the stream tomorrow, you can leave your comments on the on the comment section of the YouTube, and I will will be worried about to ask your questions and your doubts about any point of the of the of the stream. Let's twist this. So the next day I'm gonna try to work a little bit more just for being here explaining different things, not to repeating and repeating all over all over and over the same thing during the all of the streaming. So but today I have started from from completely from zero. Under zero, below zero. And I think I'm, we are having a good result. Let's duplicate this. I'm gonna grab this leg. Let's delete the others. Okay, I have subdivision level. Let's delete lower. Let's uh, delete hidden. And now I'm gonna use this little leg for at the, the two legs that they are still missed. We can put here. He is saying hello here. A good thing about the sculptures pro is that you can destroy the mess. So using the smooth the sculptures pro with the smooth brush, you can start destroying what do you want. That's it. And now we can grab this portion. We can make it longer like this. Of course, now we have a mix of different topologies. Now going to serial measure, same amount. Now we have a completely new piece of 
Let's make this thing smaller. Uh, here, for example. Okay, can you tell us every tool we you use now? Yeah, you can. You are watching the tools. I'm just using the move infinitive brush or the move topological brush. And I have been using the Sculptus Pro or destroy the part of the mesh that I don't want to use. The process of making a jewelry piece. Yeah, this is uh, the whole process of making a jewelry piece or a jewelry design. How do I set set it up? That the mesh cut at the back side. It's not cut at the back side. I have, I have this uh, this cube. You can see the cube is there. So I can push it forward to know where is the limit of the design. So I, I need to put the, where is the pearl? Is this the pearl? Oh, the pearl is this one. The pearl, okay, I, maybe I should put this. So I, I need to push it back. So there, you can see now the cube is cutting the pearl is touching the pearl, so I need to go till here. So now this is going to be the the vertical limit is going to be this one. So that's the reason why I have this just as a reference. So I can be follow working on the tentacles for knowing that the tentacles are almost touching the, the backside, but they are not cutting the backside is not cutting too many uh, material because if not if so maybe we can do the tentacles too thin but this is the one thing that we are going to do on the next stream to start being being worried about the thicknesses and the distances in terms of weight on it in terms of we are going to have enough material to set the stones okay let's follow working on this I'm working on this and the the back side instead of flat maybe it's going to be more concave so with that we're going to be we're going to be able to remove more material so we are going to be able to make a lighter more piece like this but the back as this is going to be a brute so they are going to be almost flat on the back concave or a bit hollow on the back because we're gonna try to remove as more material as possible for example what we can do now is the grabbing the the head the head i need to turn this off You can see the part is still far away from the backside, so the part the starting the starts here, so the, the head doesn't need to be so thick like this. We can start making flat the back, but the head is not still 100% the final shape. So, but almost. Maybe the bird could be not so angled. Maybe more something like uh, this. And this leg maybe could be a little bit angled to the front. How oh, to use automatic cut backside? This is not an automatic cut. This is a light boolean system that Zebras has. You can see here, this is the cube that I have on the back and it has this icon active. That means that uh, the, it, it is going to react as a negative mesh. So if I turn this off, the, cu the cube is still there. But if I turn this on, I can see we're gonna start rendering the boolean uh, operation. So. Now, if I move the cube, now you can see I can start watching what is happening 
because ZBrush is rendering uh, the Boolean results. So let's stay, this is the maximum point. Here we are. That's the reason why I used this cube as a reference on, on the backside. And also I know that this cube has 65 millimeter high. This is going to be the limits of my design. I, I'm going to try to don't make it um, uh, higher than the uh, 65 millimeter. I all, even I need to have one more left. So let's uh, duplicate this. Let's mirror it. No, not mirror it. So let's rotate it. Let's put it here, for example. Right? Let's place it here. And then maybe I need to put this one here and put this one here. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So maybe it's going to be necessary to flip it. and uh, rotate it this way and then rotate it this way okay yeah maybe we can rotate a little bit this ending Yep, because it's too straight, like this, one, and two steps. And it starts uh, looking good enough, I think. Let's relax this one. Another thing that I like a lot about working with CS spheres is that at the first time it's giving to you a very clean and regular topology to work with. So when you are polishing the mess, you are getting very clean uh, shapes like this. Let's say this That's the first step. Okay, what do you think? Do you like it? Yeah, this is planned to be cast in metal, of course. Of course. Okay, it's planned to be printed and tested in metal. With the last was casting process, of course. How to use live boolean? Can you give us a demo? Yeah, I, I'm showing to you a demo. For example, a live boolean, for example, I'm gonna give you a quick demo. You have one sphere. I do, I do. Now let's create a new sphere. You have two spheres. Let's move one to the right. So now you have three different icons here. I'm going to shift M. You have, this is the positive, this is the negative, and this is the intersection. So when you turn this on, you can see here what is happening. You are creating, you are sub creating a subtraction between each sphere. You can see you turn the transparency, you can see what is happening here. If you use the um, intersections, this is what you're having. This is the, this is what you are having. So as easy as this. 
So you only have to play with the three icons depending on what you want to create and be sure that you have this option active. But don't forget that you are rendering the Boolean. So once you are happy about what you want to create, the final step is going down till here, uh, Boolean and create the Boolean mesh. Zebras will start calculating your new mesh and you will have the result here on the, on the toolbox. And this is the, the mess, the result of the Boolean operation. And that's it. Uh, love listening and watching your designs present. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leonardo. Leonard, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's because you are the man of organic your design mess. Can't remember. Yeah, I, I, I try to. I do try to. I'm not sure if I am that man. What I'm, what I am making, I am. Uh, what I am. Uh, I'm gonna show you. Now it's over. We are making a brooch with a baroque pair, a skin baroque pair, and we made this octopus fitted on the baroque pair. So we were, we were developing the designs till the beginning from the beginning till the uh, till now till what we are having now so we are going to leave the octopus here for today and next week i'll be here streaming the same same time wednesday 26 uh, no thursday not wednesday i'm sorry thursday 23rd of March, so I will follow working on this guy till next Thursday. I will try to improve the design a little bit, try to don't be too boring about making the, the same thing and the same thing all over and over the, the streamings. So I will try to, to make more progress in my free time and the next Wednesday, no, I'm sorry, next Thursday, I'm sure next Thursday we will continue with the with the designs, creating the detailing the tentacles, planifying some stone settings, and more things, more things. Okay. I they used uh, this scanner. I have a picture here. Let me show you. I don't know the name. They use this scanner. This one. It's like a box this size, more or less. Looks inter intense to clean up. Yeah, maybe. No, not too much much I'm not happy yet with the eyes maybe the eyes I'm gonna stay the eyes like this or maybe I'm gonna try again to add the stones on the eyes it's going to be interesting this kind of marquise shape for the eyes it could be maybe interesting having this but not sure yet we will be talking about this next Thursday. Uh, great design. Thank you very much, Alfredo. Cuando algo apasiona, no aburre. Gracias, gracias a ti, Alfredo, por estar aquí. Y me alegro que te, que te esté gustando. Que te esté gustando. Me alegro. Me alegro. So, we are done. We are done. So, hope you... I hope to see you here next Thursday, 23rd. We will follow working on this design uh, till getting the best results as possible. And um, uh, take care, have a good weekend and the rest of the week. And uh, I will see you soon next uh, week. So thank you very much for, all, for being here, attending my stream. And uh, we will talk about more about Zebras and Julie next week, as I said before, again, again, and again. So take care. Bye. Thank you, everybody.